Hi, I'm Alex Dyer, Candy Ordinary for the Episcopal Church in Colorado. I'm here with two of my colleagues in the Social Justice and Advocacy Office of the Office of the Bishop. And unfortunately, they are transitioning on, but I did not want them to leave without taking the opportunity to have a candid conversation with them. So Weston and Anthony, thank you for being here. And I'll allow you to introduce yourselves. And Weston, do you want to start off and tell us a little bit about how you got here to Colorado? Sure. Um, like Alex said, my name is Weston. Um, I am actually a second year in the Episcopal Service Corps in Colorado. So I made my way to Colorado through the Episcopal Service Corps, starting in Steamboat Springs last year um, when there was a house up there. And then I joined the Service Corps here in Denver for a second year, um, especially for the opportunity to work with Anthony in the Office of Advocacy and Social Justice which is a field that I've been really excited about working in pretty much since I became an adult. So yeah, I'm glad to be here. Awesome. And speaking of Anthony, uh, you want to introduce yourself, Anthony? Yeah. Hi, everybody. My name is Anthony Suggs. I currently serve as missioner for advocacy and social justice. And I actually came to Colorado also through the Episcopal Service Corps. And about three years ago in uh, the 2017-2018 class of Episcopal Service Corps, so I came here, uh, served in the office of the bishop during that time in this role, and then uh, worked to get funding afterwards and was fortunate enough to get enough funding to bring Weston on as well. Awesome, thank you. For those of you who don't, or those people who don't know what the Episcopal Service Corps is, I mean, I don't know what it did, but some people in our diocese may not know about the wonderful Episcopal Service Corps. Can you guys just give us a quick synopsis, synopsis of, of what the Episcopal Service Corps is? I think we both could probably answer that question pretty well because we've been <laughs> intimately involved yeah. uh, for a while. But the Episcopal Service Corps is um, a program for young people, generally between the ages of 21 and 29-30 um, who are looking to do a year of service. So um, there are Episcopal service corps around the country. Uh, we have a wonderful Episcopal service corps in Colorado led by the Reverend Rebecca Crummy. Um, and you essentially live in a community with other folks in the same house. You share responsibilities. You live in an intentional community with them throughout the year. You work in different work, work sites um, as a volunteer. You pray together, you play together. Um, it's really a delightful, <laughs> a de delightful thing to be involved with. And I may be a little bit biased, but I think we do have the best one in the entire country here in Colorado. Yeah, I'm biased too, but I have some evidence to support that opinion. Awesome. Well, during your time here, uh, Anthony, you started about well, three years, and uh, Wes, and you started the year coming up on a year. What have you all in, enjoyed most about your time here serving the office and serving the wider diocese? I think what I've enjoyed most about being in this role is um, being with people at the parish level across this uh, diocese. We've got some really, really incredible faith communities stretched all the way across Colorado from Broomfield to Durango and I've been to quite a few of them in the last three years and gotten to meet people and worship with them and I think that's been my favorite part of this is actually having conversations with small groups of people and just seeing their eyes light up when we talk about social justice and community organizing and how every one of us has power to engage with our our public good systems. Mm -hmm. Wesson? Um, I think that's a that's a hard question for me to answer. Um, but I will go with my gut here. I think my favorite part has been moving from my experience in my first year of the Episcopal Service Corps as um, an independent living coordinator, doing work with folks with disabilities into this role as the organizer for community justice. I think the um, independent living movement and working with folks with disabilities brings a lot of justice issues to the table. And I think that that's something that we haven't really done a whole lot of in the Episcopal Church so far. So this year I had the opportunity to work um, with parishes and individuals across the state um, 
who are looking to become more accessible. And I think the most fulfilling times have been when I have been able to um, connect really deeply with someone who has felt unseen by the church before, unseen by the church institution and unable to access mm. uh, some of the areas of the body of Christ that others of us have um, the privilege to access without thinking twice about it. Um, I've just really loved to see those people learn to to use their voices in, in the special and unique ways that God has given them. So it's um, it's been a, a privilege for sure. Mm. Well, thank you all for the work that you uh, have done over your time here. And I was shocked to, uh, you know, see that nobody mentioned ABCD training. Uh, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna tee it up for you guys. Uh, I know it's a, a passion of Anthony. So can Anthony, can you tell us a little bit about uh, ABCD training and, and how you've seen it just kind of blossom here in the Episcopal Church in Colorado? Well, yeah, the ABCD training was kind of what I was hinting at when I spoke about the community organizing conversations that I'd had with people and especially seeing people just sort of light up when they hear that, you know, every single person has inherent value and is needed by the community. Um, I think we, in the social justice and human services world, we get so caught up in helping others and helping the needy when we could spend a lot more time figuring out how we can be enriched by the presence of other people. And I think that's what asset-based community development, which is what ABCD is, really, really leans into, is how do we, as individuals and loose associations of people and as formal institutions, how do we treat every person like they are needed? Uh, because we really believe that it's not really in God's nature to leave any person mm -hmm. or place devoid of gifts and skills. Um, God's just way more creative than that. Mm -hmm. Which ties into some of the stuff that, that uh, Anthony was saying as well, uh, in the sense of just kind of recognizing. You mean Weston? I meant Weston. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I think that was why, that was one of the major reasons I was really called to this, to this role because, um, you know, the independent living movement, while it is um, major, like a majority disability movement, it also, does exactly what ABCD does and it says, this is what we have. These are your gifts. These are your talents. We're going to work with that. We're going to, we're going to help you and everyone else in the community thrive. So I, I think that that was really one of the major, mm -hmm. the major points that I was interested in exploring this year. So I just imagine if every congregation really kind of grabbed on to that philosophy or that, you know, probably theology as well, uh, how that would shape that. And your, your, your guys' time is coming to an end uh, as you're transitioning on to other things. Uh, Anthony, you're going on to seminary, and Weston, uh, your year in uh, service corps is ending. So Episcopal Church in Colorado, what are your hopes and dreams uh, for the next couple of years? Or, or uh, what, what, would you, what would you all love to see as a result of your work here? Weston? Um, I think that I would like to see an integration of all of these justice issues. I think right now it looks like there's obviously a movement for change, right? We're seeing systems of oppression um, like racism and um, socioeconomic oppression and problems with healthcare and problems um, with access and we're seeing all of these issues right and, and I what I would like to see is the Episcopal Church moving from like little bullet points of these issues being separate to having an understanding of how these issues are kind of all interconnected and I think we're doing that a little bit right we've got We've got the realities areas that we're working on with um, anti-racism and LGBT inclusion and, and uh, suicide prevention, which also goes into the mental, mental health areas and, and 
how um, climate change is all really wrapped up in it. I, I would just like to see us really consider how all of these issues are intersectional and how um, the way that we treat um, the least of these is also in the essence, in essence, sometimes the way that we're treating ourselves. Mm -hmm. Anthony, you think that? Yeah, I would say, I mean, intersectionality is a really big way, in my opinion, to add a little bit of depth to the work that we're doing. Um, and it also takes a little bit of the pressure off of individual people and communities, because if you know if everything is intersectional, if you really lean in to healthcare, you're going to impact these other areas. And if you really lean into education, you're going to impact all of these other areas. So I think intersectionality at its core is a way for you to recognize that my little piece here affects this big piece over here too. Um, but for me, I would really hope that the Episcopal Church in Colorado capitalizes on the lessons that we've learned so far in this pandemic. Um, you know, we say it over and over again, we never actually closed the church. Mm -hmm. So if we've never actually closed the church, I would really love for people to really inwardly digest and live out that truth that we are not the building. Yes. And that if we see ourselves as community activists and community organizers and people who actually practice an asset-based lens, then we're going to look at our communities in a different way than just the people that are not in our building already. And I think if we, if we really live that way, uh, the Episcopal Church in Colorado will be a major force uh, for good in Colorado. Yeah, I think that's helpful because it is so overwhelming. And as you know, when I was in the parish ministry as well, just there's just so much injustice in the world. Uh, and it is hard. It's, it's just overwhelming. It's like, where do you begin uh, to do things? So I think the fact of knowing that you know, chipping away at something else and you know, addressing one issue will, will help with other issues as well. Uh, and just discern that. And, oh, man, I'm with you. I, I do hope people take this time. I know you, you, you and I, we all know that um, after a pandemic or anything like this, the world generally becomes uh, a better place in some ways. Uh, not quite the kingdom of God yet, but uh, the, the needle has moved uh, a little bit and society readjusts itself. And I hope the new society and in a sense the new church that we are building from this uh, will recognize a little bit more of the intersection, intersectionality and uh, start to address some of these issues. I think we are seeing how everything's kind of related when parts of our society uh, have collapsed basically. We're seeking to rebuild that. So any final words for the Episcopal Church in Colorado? Keep on keeping on. We've got a, we've got a big mission to do, and uh, we just got to do it piece by piece. Mm -hmm. And thank you. Just, oh, sorry, Weston. I've got, I've got a couple words, yeah. All right, um, as always, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, I just want to remind everyone that the work of the gospel is advocacy and social justice. Mm -hmm. um, the work of the church is to bring the kingdom of God to the people on earth right now. Mm -hmm. And um, it's, a, it's, a, it's not a marathon, it's not a sprint, but it is a relay race. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, take that baton and run with it as long as you can and then pass it on to somebody else. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you doesn't seem to be quite enough. I know you guys have taught me a lot. Uh, you've done a lot of great work throughout the Episcopal Church in Colorado. So thank you all for that. I know God is not done with either one of you either. So, uh, you know, you will continue to spread the gospel and to do great works. And I'm excited to see how God will continue to work with both of you all in the, in the years to come. So, again, thank you guys. Take care. Thank you, Alex. Thank you, Alex.